the very first time I did graffiti was in about 84 or 85 uh, breakdance movie came to England called Wild Style and for some reason I'd gone out into my dad's shed got a tin of white paint I wrote the words break on the front of our building and I got battered for it because like where I grew up it was just punk anarchy sniff glue Pete loves Sally whatever that was the typical graffiti and there was like this bubble style lettering I'd heard of this kid called Phase 32 and I'd seen his tags all over as well. I was like, right, let's start copying his. And then I found out it was in my school. Somehow we had like a mufti day because everyone has to wear a school uniform and we have this mufti day. And in walks this guy with his cap backwards, his bubble jacket on, he's got troop trainers. And I'm like, that has got to be Jamie. That has got to be Phase 32. He was the one who sort of showed me like the decent thing, like using the Karen Diash pencils, getting letter styles down to do like full pieces, uh, taught me a bit about character work, showed me all the, the books that I needed to be reading. Everyone starts out as what they call a toy. You're gonna get this, like people take the mickey out of you. Any of the guys who are kings, who've got style, they're gonna take the pens off you. All of a sudden, before you know it, you've got style. Before you know it, then these guys that you look up to are like, yeah, he's got style, you can come with us. Being in a crew, it gives you good recognition, props in the game, and it's a bit of a close family unit. Yeah, got each other's backs. So we developed a new tag style, which is like one flow, real sharp, jagged, stabbing motion. And when those go on the back of the bus, like you've got the light there, it just goes ching, it really pops that time everybody wanted to know what we was using we started that in 92 to 93 i met a polish lad and he was like yeah i do scribes and i was like yeah do you know i started that and that's where i decided to take it into another form and use my fine art background and cross it over with the street art the spray cans good to have influences it's good to influence people do you know and it, that that's what keeps the game continuously moving now like my reputation has changed like to uh, for a lot of things like i still go out i've done it like a couple of years ago went out on a mad sprawl i don't need to don't need to prove anything i, I don't like the term street artist i'm just an artist who specializes in graffiti art and fine art you've got to know the history to know why you're doing what you're doing today graffiti is pretty a mess at this state of time there's not much style in it is people just going out and scrawling and not developing the tag before they go out like artists like myself we don't get paid to paint the northern quarter we do it for free yeah if these kids come along and just ruin my work which i might spend you know, 200 pound on paint and these kids are racking their paint come along where you pissed up one night that ain't good graffiti is vandalism there's no art to it there's art when you're good at it, you know, if you're doing the colourful stuff, the characters, or you're doing what I do with the murals and that kind of work, yeah, then it transforms into art, but the stuff that you see on the streets, it's a bloody mess. I've always been around drink, apparently I was fed alcohol on dummies to shut me up, and when I was like nine years old, my mum and dad, well mainly my dad, was quite a big drug dealer like supplying England and I, I knew from an early age where stuff was stashed in the house. I used to go into the electric cupboard so I've been told by my mum and like I'd get the big cakes of like hash and just be like get caught sniffing it all the time in the hallway and then when I was 11 we was at the back of the school playing field like twisting up spliffs. I could only have a couple of puffs and then be like whoa right go back into class and have giggles and stuff and as I got older into my teenage years um, like when I got mixing with uh, Jamie and that then that's when it started Jamie was selling weed I smoked weed already by then went to Chester painting trains got ripped out of our brains smoking weed paranoid that my mum was gonna find out it was just crazy the, the first time round I wanted to get clean. I was taking a lot of amphetamine, I was drinking two bottles of Jack Daniels, three bottles of wine a night, because I've, I've had a problem with all drugs, doesn't matter if it's tablets, street drugs, I'll take it all. 
that's my makeup, do you know what I mean? I don't do things just like, oh, well, just give me a pill or oh, give me four of them. Let's have fucking two bags of coke, Let, you know, full on. I've wasted 30 years of my life. It's like, what's the point in having all this talent? If life was to end, somebody comes in here and just skips all this, nothing happens with my heart. Who remembers Nathan? Probably no one. One day I got up and I threw up and it was just pure blood coming out of me. I was like, I think something's wrong. So I rang up um, that doctor's, the, the free numbered hospital thing and went, oh, you know, got a problem, I'm throwing up blood. Do you think I need to come into hospital or will I be all right? And he went, there's an ambulance on the way, mate. You could be dying. I was like, whoa. Yeah, critical point. I've noticed since I've been clean, I've still got that creativity. I've still got that next level mind. I've still got everything that I thought I needed drugs to do or create. I don't need it. It's only now that I'm realising the talent is there and I've always had it. And nobody actually, nobody can take it away from me. Only I can. Yeah.